Private and VIP versions of many types of commercial aircraft are in service worldwide, some used by governments, some by companies, and some even by individuals. A wide range of narrow-body and wide-body aircraft are used, but as yet, there has never been a private A380. Such an aircraft would offer lots of options for interiors and fittings, as well as an impressive range. So far, though, the arguments against it have won out. But could this change? With such a lot of real estate available, we've seen plenty of interesting variations of the A380. Airlines have introduced new cabins and layouts for the aircraft, and several introduced facilities such as bars, lounges, and even onboard showers. And Etihad developed The Residence, a three-room private apartment for the most discerning of passengers. This space and options for facilities would be equally useful on a private jet version of the Super Jumbo. Two complete decks create endless possibilities for personalization, with plenty of space for private areas and to accommodate larger groups of people. It makes sense to compare it with its closest rival, the 747-8, an aircraft which has been turned into a private jet. As a standard passenger version, the A380 can accommodate up to 853 passengers, compared to 605 for the 747-8. In terms of cabin size, the A380 is slightly shorter than the 747 by just over 3 meters, but of course it makes up for this with a full upper deck of additional space. The A380 is also wider, 6.5 meters as opposed to 6.1 meters. For corporate or government use, the two decks could include creative layouts of conference rooms, office spaces, or accommodation. To get an idea of this capacity, consider how the space on the 747 VC 25A aircraft that serve as Air Force One is used. This has communication and staff areas on the upper deck, and the main deck proceeds from presidential accommodation and office at the front through to meeting and office space, then cabins for guests and the media. The A380 could expand any of these areas or introduce new sections. For private use, the options extend even further. A concept designed for a VIP A380 introduced three decks by using part of the cargo area. This has space for a car garage and Turkish bath, and two full decks of living and working space. The top deck was used as an exclusive residence and lounge area for VVIPs. An A380 private jet would offer an excellent range. Airbus quotes the standard range of the A380 as 8,200 nautical miles or 15,186 kilometers. This is higher than the 7478 by just under 500 nautical miles. A private jet configuration would carry fewer passengers and seating and therefore would be capable of even longer flights. How much longer is not entirely clear. Airbus's technical data shows that for minimal payloads, the range could be increased to around 17,000 kilometers. That gives the potential for direct flights from the UK and Europe to Australia. In fact, we've already seen direct flights from London to Darwin at the start of the pandemic. The A380 also has a higher payload capacity than the 7478. Its maximum takeoff weight is 575,155 kilograms compared to 447,700 kilograms for the 747. This gives a payload in standard configuration of 83,914 kilograms instead of 76,067 kilograms. This, of course, is normally more relevant when looking at cargo operations. But depending on a private aircraft's exact use or fittings, a fleet of cars perhaps, it could be relevant. Despite looking fairly promising on paper, we have yet to see a private A380. And possibly we never will. The reasons why the A380 has not worked out as well as hoped for Airbus or operating airlines have been well discussed. Many of these are relevant for a private jet version as well. Size The Boeing 747 has worked as a private jet for several governments and individuals, but there is a limit to the size needed by any private user. Does anyone really need all that space when the 747 already offers so much? 
efficiency and operating cost. As we've often discussed, heavy four-engine aircraft have had their day. Twins are most efficient with a lower operating cost and can offer a similar range. A private A350 or 777 can take advantage of this. Or even the new 777X for a flagship private jet. Airport restrictions Size has been a major limitation for the A380. Its wingspan places it into the highest airport operating category, severely limiting the cities to which it can fly. This can still work for an airline, with a choice of which routes it schedules A380s on, but for a private operator, this would severely limit its use and flexibility. To add some commercial context, consider a recent discussion Simple Flying had with Comlux Aviation CEO Andrea Zanetto. Comlux Aviation is a world leader in handling VIP aircraft operations and works with the Boeing 767, 777 and 787. Sonetto confirmed that the limitations of size, efficiency and airport operations would, in his view, keep the A380 out of private aviation. He told us, I think not even governments would go that way, and for private you generally don't buy a castle if you want to have a luxury home. You cannot land anywhere. You just lean to main hubs. This is not an aircraft for private aviation. There are too many limitations on the aircraft. There's also an element of a first mover advantage going on. Boeing has offered the 747 for a lot longer. It has already taken several customers for a private 747. And some operators, including the US government with Air Force One, have chosen to replace them with the 747-8. There is clearly a very limited market for this end of the private jet market, and Airbus came to it much later. Despite the challenges, there have been attempts to launch a private A380. Airbus saw this as a possibility from the outset. It was available as a corporate jet through Airbus Corporate Jets or ACJ as the A220, A320 family, A330 and A350 still are now. Airbus only confirmed one order for a private A380. This was the so-called Flying Palace for His Royal Highness Prince Al-Walid bin Talal bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia. It was ordered in 2007, but for unknown reasons, he never took ownership of it. In fact, the designed interiors were never fitted to the aircraft, and it ended up transferring to airline use. Although the aircraft was never fitted out, its design gave a great idea of what a private A380 could look like based on descriptions in the Daily Mail at the time. With less cargo space needed, there were three decks connected by lift. The lower deck had a car garage and wellness room, featuring a magic carpet floor with images of the ground below projected onto it and a Turkish bath with marble floor and walls. The main deck would have conference rooms, a concert hall with stage and grand piano, and 20 VIP suites, similar to airline first-class suites. And the upper deck would feature five large cabins, each with a king-sized bed and a bathroom, along with further lounge space. Air Force One This never amounted to an order for a private A380, but it is an interesting case. As part of the selection for a replacement for the current VC-25A747s that serve as Air Force One, the US Air Force considered the A380. Airbus, though, declined to bid, as it felt that moving production to the US for just two aircraft would be prohibitively expensive. In reality, the government was always likely to stick with US-made Boeing for presidential transport. Four aircraft marketed by Sparfell and Partners In 2017, Geneva-based aircraft Sparfell and Partners started marketing four A380s configured as head-of-state aircraft. These would be available with a VIP conversion of either both decks or just the upper deck. It did not reveal the source of these, but Flight Global reported how they were likely to be ex Singapore Airlines aircraft. Conversions, though, never happened. A lot has changed in the world of flying in the past 18 months. Aviation around the world has seen significantly reduced demand. Deliveries of new aircraft have slowed, and many aircraft have been retired early. Larger and older aircraft suffered the most. 
We've seen the 747 disappear from many airlines' fleets, and some airlines have retired the A380 early. Others may follow. This creates an unusual situation where large numbers of aircraft are becoming available on the second-hand market, and airlines are unlikely to be interested in taking on more. Only one airline to date, HiFly, has purchased a second-hand A380. This was a former Singapore Airlines aircraft and was used on various charters by HiFly. At one point, it was interested in taking a second aircraft, but in 2020, confirmed it was retiring the only one it had. As already discussed, previously retired A380s have been marketed as potential VIP transports. There have not been any signs yet of further companies, governments or private buyers interested in second-hand aircraft. But as the aviation market and economies recover post-COVID, there could be more interest. With the reduction in interest, the A380's market price has plummeted. According to aircraft appraisal company IBA, it has fallen by 50%, the most of any commercial jet. With more A380s retiring, do you think we'll see more make it to the private or government market? Will anyone be tempted by the falling price, or do its problems still limit it too much? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.